Welcome back to Master Glass. I'm your host, Livio, and on this episode, we're going to make three craft non-alcoholic cocktails. Let's get right into it. So what I wanna to do today with you is I wanna make some drinks that, will, uh, that would be nice uh, for somebody to drink at a bar, even if they're drinking non-alcoholic cocktails. We're not talking about pineapple juice and grenadine with an umbrella. We're talking about cocktails that look like cocktails so that if you are uh, trying not to drink, that, that would be a really good way to be able to hang out with your friends at the bar. So the first one that I'm gonna make is basically uh, uh, a Tommy's margarita, but it's not gonna have alcohol in it. For that reason, I'm gonna just go ahead and call it the Nami's margarita. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a big cube right in this glass right here. I'm gonna let it sit here, let it temper just a little bit, although it has been tempering already. Now the Tommy's Marg was created in 1988, 89-ish, and in it, uh, Julio Bermejo, who created it, puts two ounces of tequila. By the way, today's video is not sponsored by CleanCo. I just happen to have all their products. So we are going to use CleanCo products. In here, we're gonna put two ounces of CleanCo tequila alternative. Uh, what is a tequila alternative? It's still made through a distillation process and the flavors that you will get in it would assume to have those of tequila, such as grassiness, a little bit of herbaceousness, all those things. So you're getting the flavor, but you're not getting the booze. Uh, by the way, what is non-alcoholic? Non-alcoholic means that it's almost 0%. It's less than 0.5% alcohol by volume. Next thing we're gonna do in this uh, cocktail right here is we're gonna add one ounce of fresh lime juice hand pressed. When I do anything that, whoops, sorry about that. Give me a like for that. Uh, when I do anything that involves Julio Bermejo's cocktail here, I always go with 100% fresh squeezed a la minute because that is his philosophy. Fresh isn't something that was just sitting there for a while. Fresh is fresh pressed. So in honor of his philosophy, I am doing that right now. I'm gonna make sure that I have one ounce in my jigger here, which I just about do. Okay, we're gonna put that there, set that over here, and in our shaker, we're gonna add one ounce of uh, freshly pressed lime juice. And next we're gonna take one ounce of agave syrup. This is why it was called the Tommy's Margarita. It does not have an orange liqueur. What it does is it has a little more tequila to compensate the alcohol of the orange liqueur, but it gets the orangey sweetness flavors that would offset the citrus of the lime by using agave syrup. Agave syrup usually means that it's half a, a part of agave nectar and a half a part of water. In essence, you want your agave syrup to look very liquidy like this, not thick, you know, as you would see perhaps in honey. Okay, now that these ingredients are in, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice shake. Okay, let's go ahead and strain into the glass. Okay, now in this, on this drink here, the Tommy's Marg technically does not call for a garnish. Obviously, this is not a Tommy's Mark, it's a Nami's Mark. So I'm gonna go ahead, again, just because this is going to be something bar style, something that you would drink at a bar that you can clearly hang out with somebody who's drinking a, a alcoholic version of a margarita or an old fashioned of sort, and that uh, would work for them. So the next drink that we're gonna wanna do is just a good old fashioned gin and tonic. We've got something short, 
and citrusy here. Now we're gonna want something tall and bubbly, a little bit more thirst quenching. To make this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and just take what is called a Collins stick. Some people give it different names, but what it is, is it's just a long cylinder style uh, slug of ice that will look nice and clear in the glass. And in it, I'm gonna take, once again, Clean Co, but this time it's a gin alternative. And in this glass here, I'm gonna pour what would be two ounces, or also 60 mils, of this gin alternative. Once again, you're gonna get those flavors that are reminiscent of citrus, juniper berry, that you would find in gin. But in this case here, we've got no alcohol. And then I'm gonna grab my tonic water. In this case here, I'm gonna use Fever Tree Mediterranean. It's a little bit more citrusy, a little bit more soft. And in it, I'm going to pour. Just about there. And there we go. Now I'm gonna give this a nice little mix, like so. And what do we wanna garnish this one with? Well, we do have, why don't we do this? Why don't we put a fresh lime? It is actually not really great lime season here at Master Glass, so let me find one that looks a little more attractive. I'm gonna cut just one wheel, okay? Set that back. I'm gonna place the wheel on this glass and then right adjacent to it, I'm gonna also place this dehydrated lime chip. So we've got a fresh lime and a lime chip and we're gonna set this right over here. And by the way, so that you could see the next drink being made, I'm just gonna scoot these right over here, okay? There we go. Okay, last drink we have is a riff or a variation of a drink of another friend of mine by the name of Tony Abuganem, and this is going to be a riff on the cable car. If you're not familiar with the cable car, by now it's, a, it's really a, a modern classic uh, style of cocktail, obviously a variation to a sidecar. Uh, but if you are not familiar with it, I will leave the, li the video link of Master Glass with Tony as he shows us how to make this drink in the description below. So now, in this drink here, I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting ice in my shaker. This drink here in its alcoholic version was created by Tony Abuganem in the 1990s in San Francisco when he worked at the legendary Starlight Room. Uh, he then moved to Vegas where it also became an iconic drink in Vegas, kind of starting at the Bellagio Hotel and then um, uh, kind of moving on to other places. Okay, so in the original cable car, Tony adds one and a half ounces of usually Captain Morgan spiced rum, which is, as we know, a spiced rum. Clean Co here makes a spiced rum alternative. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. I'm ex gonna expect baking spice, caramel uh, aromas coming out, and it does. So this is looking good. Now, what are we gonna call this drink? So this was a non-alcoholic gin and tonic. This one here was the Nami's Margarita. How about we call this, this is not a cable car. This is just the cable, it's the cable. It's got no car attached to it. So it has one and a half ounces of your, or 45 mils of your spice drum alternative. I'm gonna go ahead and add here, and you know it's freshly pressed when it's separated this way. One ounce of orange juice, that is also known as 30 mils. Just like that. Okay, so now, this drink usually calls for one and a half ounces of lemon sour, which is equal parts of lemon juice and simple syrup. What I'm gonna do here is, A, I'm gonna deconstruct that. I'm gonna use uh, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, and that other three quarters of an ounce, I'm gonna offset it with agave nectar again, or agave syrup. Okay. Right there, 
does it, just like that. Okay, so in here I have three quarters of an ounce of fresh pressed lemon juice, and I'm going to sweeten that up with three quarters of an ounce of agave syrup. Just like so. Now, I don't know what this drink is going to taste like. So in this scenario here, it's probably good that I give this a quick little stir like that. Pinch my straw, take a little bit, and see if it's going to be good. Actually, I like it. It's a touch tart. I could add just a little smidge of agave but this is exactly how I like it, so I'm gonna keep it just like that. Okay, what are we gonna do with this glass? Let's just make sure that, whoops, let's just make sure that this gets nice and cold, and then a very important touch to this drink is the cinnamon sugar. Now, when you make the cinnamon sugar here, you basically wanna almost do one part of cinnamon to six or seven parts of sugar. It should be a lot more sugary than it should be cinnamony. But the cinnamon aroma really comes out nicely. So, what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna take this lemon, I'm gonna just run the lip of the glass on top of it, just like so. This glass is wet, so it's already going to be fine. And then I'm gonna just rim just like so, going around, going around. And now I have a rimmed glass. I wanna get rid of any of the excess uh, cinnamon rim, cinnamon sugar rim. And I'm gonna go ahead and shake this bad boy together. Now I did strain my OJ when I made it, but I'm still gonna go ahead and just fine strain this. Just like that. Now there's one thing about orange curacao, which is the original ingredient that went in this cocktail, um, which I replaced with basically the orange juice. Um, and I, I believe there's non-alcoholic spirit brands that make a non-alcoholic orange curacao. If there is, throw a comment below. I know they make triple sec, but orange curacao usually has a little bit of that bitter component too. It's a little bit more uh, deep because it's also usually brandy or cognac based. I could have put this on top uh, in the shaker, but I'm gonna just go ahead and put it right on the top because I want it to almost linger on the top of the drink. These are, this is Angostura orange bitters. They're gonna give a little bit more of that depth that I was looking for. And again, I'm just putting it right there on the top. You can put it in the shaker, make it a lot easier. Okay, now this drink here is usually garnished with a lemon twist. Um, now the good thing about when you use fresh pressed lemon and fresh pressed orange juice and all that is you can basically cut the garnish, the skin off before you press it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing. Okay, now putting it in isn't going to make it look super attractive, but it is gonna make a statement that this was made with fresh garnish with a fresh twist of a lemon. So there we have our three drinks. Again, really cool variety, right? We've got short, citrusy, tequila-based, maybe more uh, for pre-meal or a happy hour. We've got more of a gin and tonic, something that'll flush the food with the food, super cool. And we've got a cable car that I think is just an all around pleaser, but definitely because it has more elements of sweetness and sugar and baking spices than the previous two, this would be more towards the end of the night, end of the meal. But now I get to try them. Okay, let's try the Nami's Margarita. Okay, so I have had many Tommy's Margarita. 
This tastes very little close to it because there's no big, rich, earthy uh, tequila flavor to it, but this is super refreshing, super delicious, and it's, um, it's definitely an adult style non-alcoholic drink, which by the way, this is just something I came up with. I think these are called non-alcoholic cocktails, not mocktails. I think mocktail is the name that has been now associated with cocktails that uh, aren't, don't have an existing DNA in the real cocktail world. They're just kind of born to be non-alcoholic drinks. The Shirley Temple, it's a mocktail. It's not a non-alcoholic cocktail. But these here are existing cocktails. They've just been made in a non-alcoholic version, so they're called non-alcoholic cocktails. Mm. This is just super well balanced and I'm surprised how uh, I can still taste again some of that herbaceous citrus even coming from the uh, tequila alternative. Highly recommend it. Okay, next we're gonna move on to the G&T. This thing almost looks like it has no ice in it. As you will remember, it has a little, a tall slug in there, but it looks like an iceless G&T. Let's see what this is all about. Very nice, very, very nice. It needed to grow on me. The first sip was a little too citrusy for me. Um, and maybe just because the ice had melted and it was the top was probably more diluted than need be. As I drank down, that citrus really started hitting that those quinine notes from the tonic water. I know the gin alternative is playing in here. I don't know quite how, but it is. You can tell this isn't just a glass of tonic water. You can tell there's something, some more elements of flavor in it. But this right here is an exceptional G and T alternative. If you're, whether you're entertaining at your bar or you're entertaining at home, if in doubt on not knowing what to put either on your menu or what to serve, I always say that non-alcoholic drinks that exist in an alcoholic version are much more crowd pleasers than trying to create something new that didn't exist. Which brings me to our cable without the car. Uh, right here, let's give this a sip. Lovely, 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 yeah. Now once again, I will say, I've had many cable cars. This doesn't quite taste like it, but it's got a lot of reminiscence to it and uh, it's really delicious. Uh, uh, that clean citrus flavor that I was getting out of the Tommy's in this case here is augmented with more of those spice notes from the rum alternative, but also from the cinnamon uh, sugar notes from the cinnamon sugar rim. Mm. Delicious. I would never uh, have any problem featuring these three drinks at my bar or at my next event. And I hope you don't either. Uh, if you like this episode of Master Glass, please do give it a like and give it a thumbs up because on Master Glass, we talk about the traditions and the drinks that are tied to them. Thanks for watching.